September Sessions was a concept of Mick Swift. He came to me, I think we were walking on the beach and he first said, what would it be like to have a weekend for traditional musicians to come and to informally play music? And what would they need? And what would that be like? And how would we do it? And we started thinking about it and talking about it. And we came up with an idea that we do this uh, weekend where you arrive on the Friday and the sessions all weekend. And the core four were involved. That's myself, Declan Correll, John Kilkenny, Philip Duffy. And every year we were to invite two different guests. Every year they change. So that's how it started and it evolved. Well, I think the September sessions have evolved over the last 16 years. They, uh, to be, I think the, the, the initially it was about, uh, I suppose, having a mini festival in, in this pub here. And I think it has evolved and has had different um, permutations over the last couple of years. But what it's about now is about uh, a pilgrimage to Lugsburg once every September, once every year to September, in September for tunes and to meet up with uh, friends and play music and have a laugh and um, so it's, it's an important uh, event in my diary every year something I look forward to. So that's how it started and it evolved um, as the years went by and we tried different uh, elements then to the weekends like we've always had workshops or special events for children in the local hall um, we've also um, have always had a children's session and so that really brought in the whole kind of wider circle of people. So like, you know, Declan Carell's kids have played music and John Kilkenny's kids and now we, we all have our own kind of little young brood who love the September sessions, you know. And then they go to bed and we have the best fun. myself and that'll be it. Anyways, I suppose I grew up in a house where traditional music and dancing were appreciated. Dancing would have been uh, the first thing that we took up as kids and then into the music. It seemed to be a natural progression. My mother got talking to uh, parents that were attending the dancing classes and heard about the music classes and that's, that's how I got into music. I'd, I suppose I'd been about seven or eight maybe at the time. From, from, from there, the, the, my first music teacher was Martin Donoghue and he happened to be a neighbour of uh, my father's in a place called Clune Rain in Ballandine. So Martin is from Ballandine, but he conducted classes in Castle Martin. I'm from Castlebar originally, now living in Sligo, and I started playing traditional music. Um, oh God, it's too long ago now. When I was about 17 or 18, and I can remember the day I started. There was a fla in uh, Castlebar, a Mayo. Uh, was it a Connacht fla? Mayo fla? I think there's a Mayo fla. And a good friend of mine, John, John Mayo, who ac actually happens to be a brother of Emers. Um, we went into a session. I, he was playing the bar and I was playing the guitar, and we were absolutely useless. Well, certainly I was, and he was and uh, Holborn's Bar and we started uh, playing the session there and I was hooked after that. A couple of years later um, I started playing with John uh, Kilkenny and um, in Holborn's again that's where I started off Holborn's Pub in Castlebar in, in on Main Street and um, 
I would have got friendly with all of the males at that point in time. We went to loads of flowers together and we played every Sunday night in Hobans from 10, it was from, it was 8 to 10 every Sunday night for, for years. Comes a time when you're drifting. Comes a time when you settle down. Comes a life feeling lifting. If that baby right off the ground And oh, oh This song world keeps spinning round It's a wonder tall trees don't hit the ground There comes a time Philip Duffy, I met Philip then I moved to, I was in, living in England for, oh, it must be, what, seven or eight years? I moved back to Ireland, back to Sligo for a following period in Dublin. And um, I was introduced to, um, to Philip in, um, in a pub in Kearney called Laura's. Um, and I introduced Philip to John. And there you go. That's, that's how we all met. Well, I'm from Tubbercurry, first of all, in South Sligo. And I started playing music first in 1974. That's when I took my first lesson on the fiddle. And uh, my mother played uh, fiddle as well. She taught me at the beginning. And uh, my grandmother uh, played the melodeon uh, going years back. Um, so. On my mother's side, there was a lot of music. Not so much, if any, really on my dad's side. I first would have met John. Um, we're about the same age, and we would have competed against each other, you know, at Connet Flas and that type of thing, way back in God, the late 70s, early 80s, or thereabouts. And uh, we met John here in 2007, and uh, the two of us have been coming here since, since that, you know. And uh, very shortly after we met, uh, pr properly met, I suppose I should say, um, John actually became a member of the Dartry Cayley Band, Sligo Cayley Band. Um, so he's the only male member that's, that's, that's on our band, you know. And of course, are you Philip Duffy from my competing days way, way back? And uh, you'd open up the program and you'd see Philip's name on uh, the list, and you'd say to yourself, Well, okay, time to pack your fiddle up, John, and go home. And Declan Crell was in my class as well in school, so, and Declan and the Mayox and ourselves used to play together at you know, different functions around the town for Coltus. And we, we always looked up to uh, uh, the Mayox because, uh, well, we used to compete against them. <laughs> And we used to enjoy that too much, but any, anyways, that's that's for that's in the past, I suppose, you know. But Emma was very musical when she was growing up. I, I'm not that sure that actually that Emma even had a lesson. I'd say she probably picked it up herself at home from the others playing. But I grew up in uh, near Castlebar, northeast of Castlebar, in a little village called Ross. I started to play traditional music when I was, I suppose, about five or six. I would have um, started playing the tin whistle. 
I was the youngest of five and we all played music and we spent our childhood doing that really um, all along the way um, with various teachers and going to various festivals and just listening and all of that. Um, I didn't, I'd often heard of Emer. she's a big name in the, in the field of traditional music, but um, I didn't really meet her properly until I started coming to the September sessions here, which is about, about 16 years ago now, whatever, at this, at this, at this stage. I'd have to say that the September sessions, believe it or believe it not, is probably my favorite weekend of the year, over and beyond everything else that I play at. It's just a major longing that I have, you know, once July is out, you know, the September sessions are around, around the corner. You know, there's just something very, I think, um, personal about the whole thing as well, you know, so it's, it's very unique in that, in that respect. It's been a fantastic opportunity, you know, to kind of meet, you know, um, you know, some very big names really in the field of Irish traditional music and get the opportunity not only to play with them, but to get to know them, you know, and, you know, to obviously meet them afterwards at various other flags and, and occasions. So, yeah, it's been great. In September sessions, it's almost like you have a chance really to, you know, to go to a well, empty the tank, and in actual fact, there's a kind of an unwritten rule here now. If you start to tune the second time, you nearly get a yellow card. And uh, it's, you, you nearly see the eyes lifting. I, I, the minute you've played the first note and you're repeating it, you know you've, you've, you've overstepped. But uh, in some cases, uh, Philip might give out a red card now. He mightn't be as forgiven as others. <laughs> and I remember in the, in the early years here, um, I'd often heard a lot of other people talking about Seamus Heenahan and uh, I got the opportunity to, to meet and play with him and uh, I'd have to say I probably only met maybe three or four real what I would call gentlemen in inverted commas and uh, Seamus was definitely one of those and I used to, it's such a beautiful old style of playing the button accordion and um, I really enjoy and I miss those years you know from uh, way back. Uh, he used to play I think at some other stage over the weekend he used to play in I think possibly in Duffy's or something and I used to sneak down just to get an extra tune or whatever with him down there uh, when I started coming here first so it was great getting the opportunity to, to play with with uh, with him and he quite often he'd have you know maybe the likes of Jimmy Murphy with him from Swinford as well you know so um, yeah fantastic musicians I, I love getting the opportunity to which sure I'm one of the old musicians probably now myself but you know back then it was a different story.
again, it's 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 hard because I get so much enjoyment out of it from from my perspective. Uh, but like I, I, what I would say is that it's it's intimate, it's very family orientated, and you know it's a great way to nurture music. And again, I, I you know I'm I'm telling you this from my own perspective. My own kids have been coming back here, you know, and. Sometimes it's not about the tunes either, it's about meeting up and having a bit of fun and you know the two go hand in hand and the social aspect of it and really I suppose uh, we all uh, recognise what that means now, you know, since say the lockdown. I can tell you the last day that I played a tune in a pub was the 12th of March. I don't think I'll ever forget that date. I just think of it as the perfect combination between music sharing of music, transmission of traditional music and, and repertoire and songs and tunes and friendship rolled into it and the essence of you know what that is and family and that kind of passing on things to the next generation. The weekend always goes so quickly um, and you know it always finishes up at least for myself and Declan with the session you know usually from about three o'clock to, to six o'clock and um, you know there's I suppose there's always a kind of a sense of regret during that session but it's always so enjoyable in that you know a lot of the younger musicians you know tend to join I think they have their own separate session earlier on <clears throat> and they then join us and it's you know it's it's fantastic to just sit there and uh, I'm always in awe, especially of the, of the work that John Kilkenny does with his young musicians. And, uh, you know, they're all so enthusiastic. And each year you get, a, you know, a snapshot opportunity to see them coming along each, you know, just for maybe an hour or whatever it is each year. Uh, September Sessions is about uh, meeting up with old friends and, and uh, being young again it reminds me when I'm back I might be back in Hoban's playing in 18 20 years ago but it's all about the music uh, and the social social side of it there's just something about this hotel Got me wishing I was dead Gotta get out of New York City, boy Find somewhere to lay my head I was just kicking down the sidewalk No one looks you in the eye No one cares how you're doing And no one cares if you live or die I just gotta find me somewhere Gotta get out of New York City, son Cause New York City is killing me well, I suppose you know, you know, you just have to look around you in terms of uh, Lewisburg where it's situated and it's so scenic and you know uh, if the weather is anything like the weather we have had this weekend, it's 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 a fantastic place and the, the cottages where we've been staying for the last 16 years are unique as well um, the pub, uh, we've got to know all the guys behind the bar over the over the years, and um, uh, made be made feel very welcome. And we've had, we've had some great nights here, uh, weekends. Um, so I think it's Lewisburg is, is is part of the package as well. You know, I'm not sure would this model work in any other pub, in any other town. Uh, something about Lewisburg that makes it unique, as much as the the the, the concept of September sessions.
think my best way of describing this is that you would have to just come over to Lewisburg and to spend a little time either one of the afternoons or the, you know, you can choose the calmness of the Saturday afternoon evening session, or you can come on the Friday night and, or the Saturday night and experience a much more kind of intense um, vibe. You're in a gorgeous town in a beautiful part of the world and you're in a lovely pub. I don't describe it because uh, at this stage, I don't want anybody to know about it. It's a well-kept secret. Yeah. Um, and in some ways, if it was, it, you know, well, I suppose one of the things, maybe when we started off, it was about making this a regular big event that would bring in musicians into the pub. But at this point in time, I actually think that would spoil it. Because now it's about, it's more than that. It's, to me, it's, 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 um, uh, it's a well-kept secret. And I think that's the way it should be. Uh, I think if, actually if it became too popular, it could be a victim of its own success. I think it has taken 16 years to, know, to, to find that out, to establish that. travel together down from from Sligo to it and um, you know there's, there's always this great sense of anticipation and uh, you know we know that it's going to be just such a brilliant weekend and uh, that Friday when we travel down you know there's, there's this great sense of excitement you know that we're in for just a super weekend I mean there's never a dull moment you know, with the likes of, you know, John Kilkenny around, for example, and, uh, and Emer. I suppose I usually come straight from work, but I'd have the bag packed. So I suppose you're just driving in and uh, looking forward to, as I said, a weekend of crack and uh, just music and meeting up with friends. But of course, going home, we're always so disappointed, you know, and looking forward almost immediately again to the, to the, following, to the following year. You know, it's, it's just a fantastic weekend, one I look forward to so much. I, I would describe it as like, definitely, and my children would, as their favourite weekend of the year. I think that's the best way of describing it, actually.
Um, will we leave our bags in the house first? Or we go for a pint? That's the first decisions that we, we the conversation we have every year. Um, and it's just a sense of excitement um, of, 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 of um, knowing what's ahead. Yeah, that's it. Not an awful lot said. <laughs> because we're so tired and so wrecked and all you think about is uh, uh, the next year and it comes around so quick. Wrecked tired, but going home fulfilled. <laughs>